What's up and welcome to the episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the world's fastest laptop and that is fastest in the sense of processing power. This thing has a Ryzen 7 1700 8 core desktop CPU. No other laptop currently is packing an 8 core desktop CPU and it's incredibly thin and light when you compare it to the Intel desktop options currently on the market. Those tend to be about 10 pounds to 12 pounds and about two inches thick. So this is a lot more portable and it packs an even greater punch than those six core CPUs in those Intel desktop processors. Is it worth buying? Let's find out. It's gonna be freaking epic. Let's get started. So let's get all the basics out of the way. This thing's priced at $1,429, at least the last time I checked, which is incredibly cheap for this level of performance. Now, the tricky part here is that we have this ultra premium level of performance in a cheaper body, cheaper materials, and maybe not quite all the bells and whistles. It's got this weird blend of incredible processing performance with middle level GPU and middle level build quality. At the same time, it's only $1,429. That's incredibly cheap when you look at how much performance this thing provides for the overall price. For those of you not familiar with desktop processor and laptop form factors, I actually owned one of these from Sager. It had an Intel i7-3930K six core processor. You could overclock all six cores to four gigahertz, but that still wouldn't put you at the performance level that this Ryzen 8 core CPU is putting out. Now that laptop from Sager I had was literally like two and a half inches thick. It weighed about 14 pounds and the power pack on it was about the same size as this one. It was about a 17 pound total package. Now this laptop is eight pounds with a two and a half pound power adapter. That is much more manageable, much more reasonable. This thing is thinner and lighter and yet still packs more performance. Now there's a lot to like about this powerhouse of a laptop. The first and most important feature is the insane eight core desktop desktop Ryzen 7 1700. Now this is the full desktop version of this processor and it delivers incredible multi-core performance while at the same time not throttling or slowing down due to a great fan design and a surprisingly thin laptop packing this much punch. Now the Ryzen 7 is fantastic for multi-core applications such as video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro or 3D rendering and the like. Sadly the Ryzen processor isn't going to be so amazing when it comes to single threaded application. This is where older applications and games that aren't as optimized will actually have lower overall performance with this processor than an Intel laptop processor simply because the Intel laptop processor is able to ramp up a single core at a much higher clock speed providing much better performance in these older applications. This thing has a great base storage setup with 256 gig SSD plus a one terabyte standard hard drive as well as 16 gigs of RAM. Its Wi-Fi is fast and its SD card reader reads at about 80 to 90 megabytes per second and both were on point and worked flawlessly for us. It's rocking a great display with 350 nits brightness, good contrast, and 85% sRGB color gamut. The display is certainly above average, though it's not the best display money can buy. On the left side, it's got a USB 3, USB Type-C, HDMI, mini display port, LAN port, and power port. On the right side, it's rocking an SD card reader, two USB 3.0s, and a Kingston lock port. Well, the back is covered entirely with fan exhaust ports. Now, as far as gaming goes, it comes with a Radeon RX 580 with four gigs of RAM. Four gigs of RAM might not be enough to run everything on ultra and super high settings, especially if you're jumping up to a 4K resolution. That said, you can play nearly all games at at least 60 frames per second on high settings, maybe not ultra, depending on how demanding the game is. Think of the RX 580 as a slightly weaker Nvidia 1060. In all the games that we tested, it performed quite well. In PUBG, we got 79 frames per second. Overwatch, we got 126. Dota 2, we got 105. Witcher 3, we only got 45, but that was on ultra, so you could always down the settings just a little bit if you want a buttery smooth 60. Rocket League got 150 frames per second. In Fortnite, we averaged 76 frames per second on high, and it managed a score of 2,327 in 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra. When gaming on it, it doesn't get hot at all, and the wrist rests, and it's perfectly comfortable for long-term gaming sessions. And again, I never experienced any throttling while gaming. Now, video editing overall was great on this machine. There's just a few hits 
hiccups here and there. It's hard to describe where just some stuttering was going on. Honestly, it edited just as well as my water-cooled, overclocked desktop. That's a lot of upsides for this laptop. Great overall performance, reasonably budget-friendly. It runs cool, doesn't throttle after long and consistent workloads. So what are the downsides? Well, the chassis isn't the sturdiest around with the screen having a bit of wobble. I wouldn't think this would stand up very well to constantly being moved and packed around for that reason. If you're gonna carry this around with you all the time from class to class or from office to office, constantly opening and closing that lid many, many times a day, I'd recommend getting something with a bit sturdier construction. The keyboard and touchpad also felt a bit mushy. And I really dislike how the Asus software launch button is right where the backspace key should be. I think I accidentally launched the Gaming Center software at least 30 times while testing out this laptop. Now, the good thing is that you can disable it using the control set Center, it's not the best placement. During the two weeks that I did use the laptop, I was able to get used to the keyboard and eventually it felt pretty comfortable, but I couldn't help but feel like I was really missing out on the Razer Blade Pro's super sturdy chassis and very comfortable keyboard. And of course the touchpad on this is just, it, the buttons especially just don't feel as tactile. It has a bit of a give and then it finally clicks and I just prefer something that's either very strictly clicky. Ultimately this laptop is missing three crucial features that I value very much in a laptop. The first is a PCIe SSD. It only has an M.2 SSD slot that provides about a 500 megabyte read and write speed. Number two, it's missing a Thunderbolt 3 port. The USB-C does not support it. And number three, it doesn't have a 120 hertz display, which if you know me, if you've been watching my tech videos, you know that I really, really value 120 hertz display, especially for gaming, but it's just also nice just when you're using your computer to have that 120 hertz. Everything is smoother, everything is better. The last negative thing I'd say about this laptop is that it has pretty abysmal battery life. If you're going for maximum possible longevity, you've got the brightness down, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth off, and you're doing nothing but typing in a Word document, you're looking at about an hour and 45 minutes tops. If you're browsing the web, you're looking at about an hour and a half, and if you're playing games on it, you're probably looking at about 50 minutes, which is insanely tiny, and the main reason for the terrible battery life is, of course, that desktop processor, which can't stop down into more efficient power levels like a traditional laptop processor. So, should you buy this laptop? That's the real question. I think the number one most important question for a person considering this laptop is what is the primary use that you're gonna be using this laptop for? If you're primarily gonna be using it as a workstation for video editing, 3D rendering, anything along those lines where you can really leverage that eight core processor, this thing is going to be amazing. One of the best buys on the entire laptop space. Now, yes, this thing can game quite well, but if your primary purpose is gaming, you can get thinner and lighter laptops for a little bit less money that has similar performance. Another thing to consider when potentially buying this laptop is that Intel is on the verge of releasing their six core laptop processors. They've been on the verge for like the last several months and they're, they've got to be dropping soon in the next couple of months most likely. At that point, those laptops will be really close to multi-core performance and far beyond probably the single core performance of this thing and the same package. Give it a couple months, let Intel release their new six core laptop CPUs and let's see the performance difference and the price difference after all of those hit. Personally, I'm gonna pass on this laptop because I highly value having a very rigid body in my laptop, and I also prefer to keep my laptop under one inch thin, and I also need a three hour battery life and 120 hertz display. Those are kind of minimal features that my laptop has to have, and if it doesn't have those things, it's a deal breaker. So that's my take on it. I've got a link down below if you do decide that this laptop is for you. It's it's definitely worth taking a look at if you're desperate to have the most potential processing power in a laptop currently available. Now I am giving away a Razer phone right now. I'll have a link in the top comment down below and I'll be doing lots of giveaways in the future and I'll update that top comment to whatever the latest giveaway I'm doing is. Be sure to go check that out if you'd like to enter and potentially win a new smartphone or whatever I happen to be giving away at the time. That's it for this episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. We'll see you next time. Brandon out. Hey.